fellow investors, and welcome back to Borex Investing. This channel is all about clear, research-driven analysis and investing strategies you could actually use. So today's video is all about Palantir because they dropped their Q2 earnings this week and they left many people speechless. That's how fantastic they were. So about two weeks ago, I posted a video about potential Q2 scenarios for Palantir. And at the time, I thought that the best case scenario would be 40% year-over-year revenue growth and the stock reaching about $170 per share. But even the biggest bulls couldn't predict what would happen next because Palantir grew 48% year over year and the stock price actually hit $180 per share. So it far exceeded even the best case scenario expectations. But the most important number from the earnings report was 94 and that's their rule of 40 score. And that puts them in a league with Nvidia. So this was just a blowout earnings. So they did 48% year-over-year growth in revenue. Their U.S. commercial and government contracts were up substantially. They closed 157 deals of greater than $1 million this quarter alone. They raised their full-year guidance to $4.1 billion, which is a 45% year-over-year increase. Their adjusted operating margins improved 24% year-over-year. And they currently have $6 billion in cash with no debt whatsoever. But what impressed me the most was their rule of 40 score. So the rule of 40 is a metric that combines growth plus operating margin. It's used to assess if a company is growing efficiently and sustainably. So if that score is over 40, you're considered best in class. And Palantir just posted a score of 94. So that means that they're growing very fast and that they are ultra profitable. So that is a very rare combination. So for context, NVIDIA, which is, you know, the darling of Wall Street, they just recently posted a rule of 40 score of 119. So Palantir is not far behind. We have to remember that most SaaS companies, they dream of hitting a rule of 40 score of 40. And Palantir just more than doubled that with 94. I mean, these guys were absolutely unstoppable. So why is Palantir's growth accelerating so much? Well, I think it comes down to something I wrote about back in April, and that's their AI FDEs. So AI forward deployed engineers. So Palantir used to rely on human FDEs to tailor the platform for clients. But just recently, they've built AI models that actually can do this at scale instantly with zero marginal cost. So that means they're able to scale without hiring more people. So you have to remember that traditionally, growth was very linear. More clients would equal more engineers, but that's no longer the case. AI FDEs let Palantir serve 10, 100, even 1,000 clients with the same amount of resources. Of course, allows for margin expansion and faster deployments. So software deployments are now automated and faster, meaning better, fatter margins and happier clients. And now with this customization at scale, clients can now tweak these digital twins in hours, not weeks. So from logistics to compliance to factory floors, Palantir becomes very mission critical very fast. So more deployments equal more data, which equals smarter AI, which means more value and more clients. So the AI FDEs just made this flywheel spin faster. So we're talking about companies running operations very efficiently with minimal human intervention using Palantir's AI as the backbone. So I think that this Q2 report was just far bigger than earnings. I think this is really a new chapter for Palantir. So they're transitioning from a complex consultancy model to a hyperscalable, margin-rich software platform. This is the only company that's actually building the infrastructure for autonomous enterprise AI. And these AI FDEs are their iPhone moment, the productization of something powerful. So this kind of scalability is what separates good companies from generational ones. So this really reminds me of Microsoft during their shift to Azure or Amazon with AWS. We're seeing margin expansion, revenue acceleration, and expanding TAM all at once. So if you're holding Palantir from lower levels, congrats. But if you're not in yet, I think the window is still open, but probably not for too long. If we look at their 94 rule of 40 score, their 6 billion in cash, their AI FDEs, their huge expansion, their sticky government contracts, their commercial acceleration, Palantir is pretty much doing everything right. They're doing it fast. This is the beginning of a new tech cycle driven by AI infrastructure, and Palantir will be one of those anchors. Even the haters that used to laugh at Palantir in the past, like Jim Cramer, have actually come out and said, hey, this is a great investment. This is an amazing company, and they're doing something nobody else is. Kramer himself just went on CNBC and said that this stock is going to $200. So I just wanted also to say thank you to the Palantir retail investor community. I mean, we were buying the stock years ago when 
everybody was screaming that this company was useless. And it turns out they were wrong and we were right. So not only were we right, but we also made tons of money in the process. And this company really changed the lives of many people. So I'm excited to see what the future brings for Palantir. All right, if you found this useful, please hit like and subscribe to Borex Investing. And if you're more interested about how AI FDEs work, I'll put a link in the description for the article I wrote below. So let me know in the comments what you think about Palantir's recent earnings report. And if you're buying, holding, selling, I'm interested in finding out. All right, thank you. And I'll see you next time.